Joining us now is Sunil Katke from uh, uh, he's head commodity retail at Kotak Securities. Uh, Sunil, hi, good to have you. You know what I want to discuss is about the year gone by, and we've seen uh, so much of uh, hits and misses on to this one. Suspensions of various commodities that have continued into next one year as well. How would you look at the reading on how commodity derivative markets have been for the year gone by? Uh, hi, Manisha. Good afternoon. Uh, see, commodity uh, derivative markets have done well in 2022. I mean, if we say uh, participation-wise or volume-wise, uh, commodity uh, volumes compared to the previous year have gone up by 70%. Even the number of participants at exchange-traded uh, commodities has gone up by, uh, you know, the similar number, 65 to 70%. Uh, thanks to the introduction of options contract, because earlier the liquidity or participation in options was not there. Uh, but now it is gaining momentum, and obviously that is contributing uh, to the growth of uh, the, the derivative traded uh, commodity uh, that are uh, that are that are you know actively traded now. So uh, so if we see uh, what are the other factors that have impacted uh, these these uh, surge in volumes of say 65 to 70 percent is like the, the Russia Ukraine war that uh, that created a turmoil in global supply and demand for major commodities, especially the energy related products. Uh, that led to a lot of volatility. Now these volatilities do. Uh, you know, grab the attention of a lot of traders. You know, these traders tend to use the futures and options instruments to to make the most of the opportunities that are available. Mm -hmm. So, all in all, if we see uh, the global un un uh, you know uh, economic uncertainties that we saw, uh, the inflationary related concerns that we saw across the globe, uh, uh, Fed's uh, you know counter attack on you know taking down the inflation, uh, the rate hikes that we saw, you know that led to a lot of volatility in precious metals, be it gold, silver. Uh, industrial commodities also uh, have been volatile. Yes. Even the energy, uh, you know, segment was the most active one uh, during 2022. Sure. And obviously, these uh, uncertainties have actually given uh, an opportunity for traders to make the most of it. And uh, you know, like like I said, 70% increment in one year time compared to the previous year is a good number. And uh, retail participation is also good, uh, you know gaining momentum uh, in the Indian, in the, in the, uh, you know, in the Indian market. And we are very much positive that similar momentum will. Will continue in 2023 as well. Mm. Well, that's mostly about uh, true about the non-agro space, but the agro commodities clearly have a bit of a hit and a miss there. Uh, with seven commodities in suspension, we have seen the futures volumes go down there. What is it that you're watching for when it comes to agriculture as a space uh, for 2023? See, I think currently very limited commodities on the agri space mm -hmm. are available for trading, uh, be it guar complex or uh, we have say spice complex. Mm -hmm. Apart from that. Uh, you know, we don't have the pulse complex available in the market right now. We do not have the soya complex or edible oil complex that is available. Uh, I think uh, majority of the uh, industrial uh, participants or the value chain participants were looking forward to uh, see some relaxation from uh, the government side to to see these you know contracts getting launched again on the uh, you know uh, electronic traded exchanges. But right. unfortunately, uh, you know the time horizon is extended by one more year, uh, considering uh, the volatility in these uh, commodities. Uh, it is a bit uh, unfortunate uh, for the physical participants because they currently do not have a platform where they can actually hedge their commodity uh, price risk. The physical uh, price risk, you know, uh, ideally hedging uh, was was a major uh, uh, concern uh, for for uh, you know the physical participants. If they don't have a platform where they cannot they, they cannot hedge their physical price risk, then it becomes a challenge. I mean, uh, ideally, uh, large industries do not go by. Uh, you know, keeping their open positions uh, by, by exposing their uh, business uh, margins to sure. the commodity price risk. So what happens mm. to these participants, they'll have to look for international exchanges. Mm. Ideally, they move their hedging requirements to uh, foreign markets. So by doing that, uh, we are, you know, degrading our uh, domestic market. So ideally, we are very much confident maybe government will look into these things and uh, over a period of time, uh, they will come out with uh, you know uh, you know these contracts getting relaunched mm. currently it is being ex uh, you know extended uh, i mean the ban is ban being extended year, yes. by one more year but hopefully they should uh, look into the same absolutely sunil so, also uh, i mean as you said there has been a 60 to 70% of a jump up when we look at participation even volumes for that sense would you say much of that really comes in from options is index also picking up the index, index trading that is uh, yes, Manisha, I think options has been a game changer uh, because the, the the future contracts are capital intensive. Like uh, in order to uh, take a futures contract position, you'll have to invest what 10 to 20 percent of the contract value, which I mean, in case if I take an example of gold, for example, uh, one lot gold, if you want to buy or sell on a future contract, you'll have to invest what five lakh rupees as a margin money. 
uh, normally an individual may not come with that uh, hefty amount to, to trade in commodities. Ideally, a retail investor would look forward to uh, start trading with, say, uh, 50,000 or 1 lakh rupees margin money. So options give him that uh, you know flexibility where they can take a call option or they can take a put option by paying 1, 2, 3 percent of the contract value. Say with 25, 30,000 rupees, also somebody can trade in uh, you know uh, these uh, these commodity options. So this is where uh, I see a, a huge opportunity in place. Uh, if we compare commodity derivatives with that of uh, you know the equity derivatives market, uh, it is not even close to half half a percent of the kind of volume that we see on Nifty and Bank Nifty uh, you know uh, options on the futures and options space. Uh, so coming two to three years time, if I if I look at it uh, from from uh, from the commodity space. I believe uh, that uh, commodity space is gaining uh, a lot of attention because uh, now digital uh, platforms are gaining momentum. A lot of uh, awareness-related activities are going on. A lot of influencers are also taking mm, yeah. uh, a lot of uh, you know digital in initiatives to educate people. So I feel uh, over a period of time, people will uh, come into commodity market, and uh, we anticipate that this market in the next uh, two to three years uh, time horizon has a scope to grow by five to ten times uh, right. from from the. Okay. Five to ten times, that's a, that's what I'll ask. But again, like uh, you said, Sunil, that, you know, uh, globally, commodity derivatives are way bigger than equity derivatives. In India, it's, of course, uh, just about 50% or less than that, uh, uh, based on the numbers that you're talking about. Manisha, Sunil, thank you so much for joining in. Sunil, wish you a happy 2023 as well. With that, uh, we're out of time on this edition of Halftime Report. You stay tuned. The Nifty Bank and the Midcap Index have inched back into the green. Let's see what happens to the other indices.